Today's lesson is going to be on gears and pulley drives and sprocket. Um, these thre three powertrain elements, okay, you have gears on the left. Okay, pulley drives, you can see it. This gear on the left looks like it's from a, a car engine. Um, pulley drive, this looks like it's from a, um, a mower, right? And sprockets and chains right here is from a motorcycle, right? All of them transfer energy through a rotary motion, meaning spinning around. Um, they change the direction of rotation, and they also change how much torque is available that, to do so. Um, a gear train is a mechanism for transmitting rotary motion, again, rotary is around in a circle, and torque through teeth. So the teeth mesh together when we're talking about gears. So even when you're riding a bike, people talk about gears. They're not technically gears because um, teeth are not interlocking. It's working with a chain. But, um, so um, gears are where teeth are meshing with each other. Um, a driver gear is the one that's causing a motion, and motion gets transferred from the driver gear to the driven one. Mating gears always turn in opposite direction. Um, you'll notice that the, um, the red one here is moving clockwise. I'm sorry, the blue one's moving clockwise, all right? And the red one is moving counterclockwise, the opposite direction, okay? Um, uh, below, we have what's called an idler gear in the middle. The red one in the middle and the lower image is an idler gear. The idler gear allows the driver and driven ones to go in the same direction. So you notice in the lower image that this blue one on the left is going clockwise and then the one on the right is also going clockwise. So that's what the idler gear does. It allows them to go in the same direction. Mating gears always have to have the same uh, size teeth, what we call the diametric pith, pitch. The rotations per minute or RPMs of the biggest gear is always slower than for a smaller gear um, <clears throat> when get when gears are meshing here. All right. Um, so this blue one, if you notice, is spinning around a lot slower than the red one is, okay, because it's got more teeth. Of uh, gears that are locked together on the same shaft, such as the blue and this yellow, yellowish one, will always go in the same direction. Notice they're both going clockwise, both going clockwise. And they're also going at the same number of rotations per minute. When learning about gear ratios, there are a couple variables we need to be familiar with. The first is um, N, which represents how many teeth there are. So we would count up how many teeth. All right, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, this is 12 teeth, all right? Uh, the red one has one, two, three, four, five, six teeth. All right, so the red one has six teeth. We also need to know um, the diameter. Okay, we're given the, this blue one on the left is a diameter of four inches, and the diameter on the right is two inches. Notice two inches is the red one, four inches um, is the blue one now. All right, um, the symbol for angular velocity or speed is the Greek letter omega. It looks like a, a script W. The symbol for torque is this Greek letter tau, which looks kind of like a Greek T. Um, the uh, angular velocity is how many RPMs. So in this case, the blue one is 20 RPMs, okay? And the red one is 40 RPMs, right? 40 RPMs, all right? And torque um, is um, measured in foot pounds, um, so the torque in from the red one is 40 foot-pounds, the torque out um, for the blue one is 80 foot-pounds. So basically the, the driver gear is the in one, okay, in is the driver gear, so the red one is driving the blue one. So you notice the blue one, the red one is going fast and the blue one is going slower because as you go slower, the RPMs are slower. And that shows you from your numbers here, your red one is going 40 RPMs and your uh, blue one is going slower at 20 RPMs. Uh, important equations to know are, are gear ratio. The important formulas for gear ratio, and these are all in the formula sheet, our gear ratio is equal to N out, which is number of teeth in the out, um, and um, over N in, okay, where out is the output gear, the one that's driven, in is the driver, um, which is also equal to diameter out over diameter in, um, which is equal to the omega in over omega out. Notice that omega is opposite, okay? All the other ones are out, out on the top, but omega 
is the opposite. Omega is reciprocal. Ins on the top, outs on the bottom. Um, the gear ratio can also be calculated if you know the two torques, which is the torque out over torque in. So any of these, um, if you know the two Ns, the two Ds, the two Omegas, or the two torques, any of those can be used to calculate uh, the gear ratio. So um, for example, we could do N out over N in, which is 12 over six, would give us two. We could also do D out over D in, which is four over two, which will give us also two. Um, or we could do omega in over omega out, which is 40 over 20, which also gives us two. Or we could do torque out over torque in, which is 80 over 40, which also gives us two. So we could use any of those that gives us a gear ratio of two. So you don't need to need all this information. You, um, part of it's perfectly here we're asked to calculate the gear ratio from A between A and B, okay? So A is the input and B is the output. So um, our output we said is 12, so our numerator is 12, our input is 20. Um, so we're dividing by, so 12 divided by 20 gives us a gear ratio of 0.6. Now we're doing the gear ratio from B to C, okay? All right, now, notice now, B is the driver, okay? So B is N in. So B is now the numerator, okay? So we put 12, I'm sorry, B is now the denominator. So before 12 went on top, now 12 goes on bottom because what was driven is now the driver. In this case, C is the driven, so our driven is five. So we have five over 12, which gives us 0.42. Next, we're asked to calculate the gear ratio between C and D, okay? Well, our driver is five, so five is the denominator. Our driven is 20, so 20 is our numerator. 20 divided by five gives us a gear ratio of four. Um, idler gears don't affect the gear ratio. So if we're asked to figure out the total gear train ratio, we only need to look at A and D. These are both idler gears in the middle, okay? They allow us to go ahead and move um, the move the, the position from of this axle to this axle over here, which is farther away. So we only need to focus on the, the 20 teeth and the on the for A and the 20 teeth for D. Um, so the um, to calculate gear ratios, what we would do if we have multiple gears is we would multiply the other ones together, which was 0 0.6 times 0 0.42 times 4. Those were the numbers that we had in the last slide, which gives us a gear ratio of one to one. Or if we were just to connect A and D directly, okay, the resulting gear ratio would be the same because the 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 um, the N out is D, which is 20, right? That's the number of teeth in our out. And our driver or A is our N is 20. 20 over 20 gives us our gear ratio of one. So this slide demonstrates that the idler gears are irrelevant when it comes to calculating a gear ratio. They are useful because they allow us to separate gears apart. Okay, they're farther apart. Um, but in terms of gear ratio, um, they're not significant. So what would be the gear ratio if the last gear had 40 teeth? Well, then um, it would be two to one, right? Because our N out would be 40. So we'd have 40 on top divided by our N in, which is 20. 40 divided by 20 gives us two. If we have a compound machine, okay, um, gear ratios become very similar to mecha um, mechanical advantage, um, except we're applying it for torque instead of force. So mechanical advantage would be force out over force in, gear ratio is torque out over torque in. So it's a similar idea, similar concept, similar calculation. If we're doing dealing with compound machines, we multiply mechanical advantage to get a total MA. So here MA total is equal to MA1 times MA2, et cetera. Gear ratio works out the same. For total gear ratio, we multiply additional, we multiply the specific gear ratios together, um, and that gives us um, our total gear ratio. So mechanical advantage can you be used to calculate torsi forces. Gear ratios can be used to calculate torques. So similar, but slightly different. If we have a compound machine that involves um, multiple me mechanisms, here I've got a wheel and axle, all right? So I've got um, this, is this gear right here is a wheel on top of this axle. So that's number one. We also have a gear train because we've got the pink gear 
um, meshing with the blue gear. And we also have another wheel axle on this side, right? We've got a wheel and an axle right here. Our first wheel axle is this bar. Okay, that's our DE. Our bar has a D distance of 4.4 inches divided by our uh, distance of our axle, which is this, um, which is this, um, this gear. So the DR is one and a half inches because that's the radius of our gear. So our DE is 4.4 divided by our DR, which is 1.5. So that gives us an MA of 2.93. Our next compa compound machine in this example, we got a gear ratio and in over um, and out over and in and out is 24. So 24 is our N out divided by 60. That's our N in 24 over 60 give us a gear ratio of 0.4. Our last uh, machine is this blue gear is driving this bar. So our DE is the diameter of the gear, which or radius of the gear, sorry, which is 0.6 inches, which is driving our DR, which is 0.4, or 4.4 rather. But that gives us a mechanical advantage of 0.14. Um, to calculate the total total mechanical advantage, we multiply the individual mechanical advantages, which is 2.93 times 0.414. That gives us a total mechanical advantage of 0.41. The gear ratio, um, again, is equal to is 0.4, which we calculated out. Um, there are some cases where we take a bunch of gears and we combine them together, and we call that a compound gear train, where we have a bunch of gears where we're combining them together. So in this case, the green one is the driver, the yellow one is driven, okay? The yellow one is on the same axle as the blue one. Notice they spin at the exact same speed. Notice the, um, the white circles stay in the same location. Not, none of them passes the other. And then, which ultimately then drives the red one. So um, what we've got in this case, these two middle gears, the yellow and black one have a common axle. So as we said, they rotate at the same speed. This allows the final gear to re re rotate slower. Notice this red one is much slower. Okay, um, so the final gear produces more torque than if it were connected only to a driver gear. Um, this is, for example, if you picture a tractor. Tractors have really big wheels for the rear wheels for the drive wheels because it gives them a lot of torque, which gives them a lot of pulling power. That's why tractors, which can be small, can pull huge things. Okay, um, uh, because and it also gives them a lot of torque. We're asked here to calculate the gear ratio between A and B. Well, the gear ratio is going to be N out, which is 40, divided by N in, which is 10. So 40 over 10 gives us 4. Next, we're asked to calculate the gear ratio between C and D. Okay, well, um, uh, C has 20 teeth. Okay, that's our N in. So the, the numerator, I'm sorry, the denominator is 20. The N out is our numerator, that's uh, 50. So we have 50 over 20. So five over two gives us two and a half. What's the gear ratio of the entire gear train? Well, we multiply gear ratios together. So we get 2.5 times four gives us a gear ratio of 10. So the combination of these compound gears together gives us a gear ratio of 10.